Hi everyone, welcome to uh, Chavista and Coffee from Caracas. No coffee, right? We don't have coffee, but anyways. Uh, today we have the pleasure of having, of interviewing Diego Sequera. Uh, Diego is uh, part of the, the team of Mission Verdad, one of the most important agents uh, within Mission Verdad, which is a very important uh, news outlet, Chavista, anti imperialist news outlet in Venezuela that we in Orinoco Tribune translate a lot, part of the work that they do. Uh, and, uh, we want to talk with Diego about current events in Venezuela, uh, especially these latest terrorist plots that has been unveiled by Venezuelan authorities that led to the arrest of uh, NGOs, uh, Rocio San Miguel, uh, and the implications that this has in the Parallel agreement and the political negotiations within Venezuela. The second issue that I believe that we should talk about is the the, the Guyana, the Sequina territory dispute, and uh, you know what has been happening since the last quarter of last year sure. uh, until today, and how some people in the north have misrepresented what Venezuela has been trying to achieve uh, uh, around that particular issue. And also, uh, last but not least, I believe that it's important to talk also uh, about the confrontation between the PSUV, the, 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 ruling party. the ruling party of Venezuela, and the Communist Party, the PCB. Uh, that is a struggle that has been happening uh, already for a long time, for several years already, but that is always there, and I believe that there's people uh, outside Venezuela that might get confused about uh, about it. So Diego, welcome. Thank you for having me one more time. Happy to be here. Yes, it's always a pleasure talking to you, and and tell me what do you think about this uh, Rocio San Miguel case and yes. uh, and the implications her arrest has. And, 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 and the whole, you know, terrorist plot that was on bail has on the Barbados Agreement. Sure. Uh, I think the first thing you have to bear in mind about uh, the foiling of all these major, pretty dangerous plots that happened actually last year, because that's, a, that's a, I think that's a key aspect of all the of the whole situation, because it's something that's not recent. I mean, Besides two of them that actually reach the uh, New Year 2024, the one, by the way, which was San Miguel is also the one, by the way, which is with, and um, these are several plots that uh, not only they have been curtailed throughout 2023, but also uh, I'm pretty sure that we're going to see new evidence of new, more, more recent, or at least connected to uh, events that have already had to do with these plots. I mean, we have we have the, the rest of this teachers union guy in Marina, Federico Venegas, which yeah. we haven't now... Not developed. Not yet, yeah. yeah, not enough, I mean, because it's, it's currently being investigated. Mm -hmm. But he, he has each and every kind of connection with each of every, every of these actors. And as you know, also uh, the Tachia State, which is border with Colombia, it's, it's a major ground. Can see that by most of these plots, it's, uh, it's neighbor of Marinas, where all this happened. So it's very there are a lot of interconnections between these these regions. All of them, in a way, border or close to Colombia, border in a, in. A, in very, very accessible also, so it's it's, it's a very difficult to find in, in most of these plots that we're talking about. And regardless of how they are conceived now that we have like a, we can call it a friendly government in, the, in Colombia currently, but that doesn't mean that you don't have, uh, yeah, of course, or, or even, you can be there. I don't know if it's probably uh, put, but, Road actors, 
because maybe the world head to actually visit president and not in the security establishment yes. of Logan, but that's something else. Yes. So the thing about these plots is they all were happening, they were developing in a very sensitive moment in which Venezuela and the U.S. were actually uh, pretty much, the U.S. government in this case, uh, were pretty much uh, involved in their own channel, dialogue channels mm. around several key issues. Of course, most of them under the framework of the Barbados Agreement, but also about the major issue, actually the U.S. main interest, which is not no one's human rights, it's oil, it's, oil, it's energy. And it's, it, has to, it has to do with, with the energy market, it has to do with the supply of energy, and also has to do with how much they're going to resort to their own strategic reserves after the special military operation yeah. started in, yeah, in, in Ukraine, which with all the sanction package that the U.S. and Europe tried to isolate Russia, Sadly, or by fine to them, the, 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 the other one that actually ended up disrupted. In the case specifically of Germany, completely isolated, and also not only that, but we also towing the line of the US, so, we, so they're now like enhanced parties. Mm -hmm. So that's like the major background of why there are so many concerns by the US and uh, now about you know trying to find uh, in routes between them and Venezuelan government in order to stabilize the oil market. That's like the main issue. It's funny how this was, all of this started around March 2022. Mm -hmm. But it's funny if you do if you follow the timeline of these uh, developments, and especially when they went public, you're gonna find out that and you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna see that on press releases or pressers or you know with press conference in in the State Department or the White House that. They always, they used to put in advance the concern of the people that were in prison in Venezuela, the US citizens who were in jail. Mm -hmm. They tried to, to, you know, frame it as a humanitarian concern, but all of those visits focused uh, allegedly on the uh, prisoners. That most, of, most of them engaged or involved in also very sensitive plots against the country. Uh, I mean, think about the major single plot, single six, or think about the, the these young people that were involved in the, the Gideon operation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We're not talking about, you know, uh, like a football. Yeah, we're not, we're not talking about like sport people. Yeah, we're not talking about like, yeah, not talking, it's like yeah, the basketball player, uh, from, uh, this young lady from the US mm -hmm. and Russia. No, it has to do, it has to do with hardcore. Uh, terrorists. Yeah, terrorists. Yeah, terrorists. Yeah. Yeah. And what not? I mean, it's, it's pretty sensitive. But the Subyasin plot, at least at that point, it was about normalizing, trying to find ways of normalization conversations in order to stabilize the oil supply. Yeah, right, right. Especially on this side of the hemisphere, of course. If you don't control this, it's quite, quite hard to uh, be more aggressive about other places, right? So that's something that you have to, it's like a baseline you're gonna find throughout these last two years. So, but this approach is not a general approach of the US government. It's basically an exclusively a one from the executive branch. I mean, something that involves specifically Democrats within the Biden administration. No, I forgot to mention, sorry, that part of this, you know, Barbados Agreement mm -hmm. of U.S. Venezuela bilateral relations was also affected by the disqualification of Maria Corina Machado. That's oh, yes, part of course. Of yeah, that also has to do with it. Part so, of the yes, it's actually it's significant. Mm -hmm. because they, I, I mean, forgot that's, to mention that. Because that's where it, it, everything gets evinced. It gets clear what actually they were up to, and, I'm, and, and that's specifically about the, the, the Democrats. Why do I say this? Because you do have all these five different plots, most of them involving border states, most of them were in border states that... Uh, 
people. Military, ex military people, or current military mm -hmm. people, to, uh, they, they were able to bribe or to co opt mm -hmm. in, into their own scheme. But, um, and they're all overall similar to each other as in how it, yes. what they look for, you know, basically. It started also like taking major garrisons in the frontier, but also a lot of. Uh, Info operations about how the defense of Venezuela is working, how the security is it's, it's operating, where are the vulnerabilities and weaknesses. And one of them, the uh, Brasalete Marco White Bracelet, which was the, was the most mature one of them all, also involved one of the time the attempt, the, and, and I said the yes, plan and the yes. assassination of, of the President Nicolas Maduro. And Bernal. Also the governor of Tachira, yes. And you know, the Minister of Defense. The Minister of Defense, yeah. A lot of high, uh, high profile figures of the Venezuelan government, regardless mm -hmm. of their uh, position mm -hmm. right now. So, the thing about uh, Rocio San Miguel. In this, well, sorry, before getting into her, I, there's, a, there's a key point here, which is one thing was what could have been the interest of a part of the executive branch in this case, White House, State Department, and especially the National Security Council with Juan Gonzalez, Juan Gonzalez now replaced, uh, which was about normalizing and also. Do you think that the change? I mean, the, the, the departure of Gonzalez is going to affect, you know, that those negotiations that happen behind the I think they might. Not because of... Uh, affect positively or negatively? It depends. In our case, negatively. I think, I hope I'm wrong. Of course, I might be wrong, and I hope I am. But um, yeah, I think negatively, especially because of how the... the the whole environment has, you know, got all worked up now after all this whole change of chain of events that have been going on. Mm -hmm. But once more, it gets to it, it's trying, uh, it holds in the, 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 the same point. You have to think about you don't have we're not engaging with one government. We're not talking to one USG. We're talking basically to some actors of one branch, while at the same time you still got a lot of different political, across the spectrum, a lot of political actors that actually have a very different approach. position and, and approach, both against, uh, about what to do about Venezuela and against the Chavista government in Venezuela. And you, know, you, you even have them in their own government. You think about the difference about the kind of statement that Juan Gonzalez used to do with what Brian Nichols, the other Secretary of State, does. I mean, he's, he's insanely belligerent, belligerent and zealous in comparison to the more pragmatic approach of both sides in this case. Mm -hmm. and that tells you a lot of how many factions are actually trying to impose their own line about what to do about Venezuela, not only through conventional political ways or public ways, but also undermining them in other ways, and the usual can, ways. It get worse because we are in the middle of, I mean, of the presidential rising in the US. So it's uh, going to get uglier. It's, right? it's, it's, it's definitely going to get uglier, of course. And yes, you did. Not only that, you have fundamentalists about Venezuela uh, across the whole spectrum. It's about Venezuela has always been, and we have, we can't forget this ever. It's a bipartisan issue. I mean, there might be differences in style, there might be differences in method and approach. And Ways of engagement, but there's but overall the same is the same aim, the same goal all the time, which is very change. The difference is that what the, the Democrats and these people were looking for was, was for a more sugar-coated approach. Was actually was actually actually also conceived and written uh, by think tanks, by think tank land in this case. Specifically, you can think about the Wilson Center, which is the most mm -hmm. uh, concrete and crystallized one. The Sun it's a report we published. At the end of uh, it was December the 27th of 2022, which is actually like the route that they established, the blueprint they established, which is basically what you saw during the during the, especially during the last year, mm -hmm. which you had the major achievements, the major uh, breakthrough moments were all last year, and, and maybe the, the, the highest point of this 
was the the release of yeah, the licenses, the so-called licenses. Mm -hmm. It also has to do with what we were going to say the release, the release of yes of well, right, so It also has to, that was a, yeah that was a, a very important move, mm -hmm. which also involved the release of the remaining and uh, prisoners mm -hmm. that were here. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean the terrorists, the mercenaries. Uh, from the Guinea mm -hmm. operation, and a CIA operative that was actually mm -hmm. detained in Maravana. Right. Yeah, close to a refinery. Uh, it's easy to imagine what they were doing there, mm -hmm. of course. But the thing is that while this sort of visible public uh, trend we were witnessing with all these major landmarks like the licenses for oil and gas mm -hmm. in Venezuela and Ireland. The prisoners exchanges. Yeah, the prisoners exchanges and the release of Alex Saab, mm -hmm. among other, which was a key point of the Venezuelan government, not only the Venezuelan government, but I mean, mm -hmm. within the process, uh, were being undermined all this time. And that's something that for sure, with the Venezuelan government at the highest level, the US government has level with their own security apparatus, were well aware of. These were ways to actually disrupt and undermine this process, which also goes harmonized which, with the decisions and the bills and acts that are trying to be enacted within the Senate and Congress. Uh, Cesar Act, Verdara, Cesar Mora, the Bolivar Act, Verdara, and whatnot, all basically following the same sanctions template we already know. They were just, uh, you know, pressing the screws a bit more. That's the only difference. So, of course, they were going to use for this kind of work the usual suspects, the public ones and the not so public ones. When I say about the not so public ones, I'm just talking about like yes, uh, some military, some rogue military, some specialists from the U.S. side, and on the more, more visible side, the anti-political crew, which Rocio San Miguel has been uh, from a long, for a long time, one of these people. She runs the quote-unquote transparency NGO called Control Ciudadan, which mainly focuses on military issues, military aspects mm -hmm. of security, of uh, military purchase, of, you know, weaponry from other countries and whatnot. That was her stress, her strain of, of work. She, she's been doing this like for 20 years. And if you you can go and check the wiki leaks. There are several cables that they talk about in 2005, 2006, 2007. There's, there's even uh, William Brownfield, who was, of course, uh, ambassador of Colombia in the uh, two, two yes, yeah, before that. Mm -hmm. And now he's now part of Think Tank then, because now he's part of the Wilson Center also, among other uh, of these think tanks. Yeah, think tanks and institutions. All these, you know, well-paid mm -hmm. uh, seats he gets, of yes. course. Uh, he talks about her as a, very, a person that's very much involved with the US, USAID. Yes, yes. So the current investigations about her specifically, or around her, to be more uh, accurate, were about her role on a, on, on a major on the major plot, which was she was going to be like some sort of conveying belt about everything that had to do with military movements, and she has a lot of within that within, within the plot, yeah, and she was going to her, her main her main task was to inform in real time all the military movements that were going on throughout all around Venezuela, and Venezuela bases, air bases, mm -hmm. infantry bases. What not? That was her plan, and, that, and, and this is and this is something that's actually very well investigated. There's a lot of evidence about it, and otherwise they wouldn't I mean, arrest her, arrest her, or even declare on on, on TV or public TV about what, what she was up to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And actually, today the Attorney General, the today the Attorney General, I think, uh, gave more details. Gave more details about this. Absolutely, yeah. I, I, I'm not aware of those details because I was not. I was in the show. She had some maps. She had maps. She had several, 70 or 18 maps, that's yeah. true. She had a little bit exactly. That's what uh, the Attorney General was uh, the to her. Well, uh, there you go. I mean, it shows how, how much she was involved and how much she has been involved before also. Mm -hmm. Maybe this was a time that there was no 
even the perhaps more practical sense of you know just following her and surveying her and following her steps because mm -hmm. it was enough and she was made way too much now we are talking about her uh, and I and we talk about uh, my Codina myself I'm realizing that Maria Codina myself is not in the news anymore you know what I mean yes I mean it's, it's like, true it's I like if she disappears it's true. Yeah. Maybe in the meantime they are trying to solve all the difference among you know the, the right wingers here in Venezuela, the plataforma unitaria maybe. Yes, and well, there, 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 there was another contact recently also between the, the, the unitary platform and the government mm -hmm. just today. I mean some proposals right. about right. how right. right. yeah, the yeah the elections can of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Okay. And the, yeah, 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 yeah. It's too many things at the same time and we were used to a to a, in a, in a, in a parent superficial uh -huh. peace moment which is definitely ending we're gonna we're entering now into an election idea and turn it around because of not only because of the elections but also because of all these developments which yes most of them dealt around elections and uh, the but thing uh, well, well, uh, there too one of the things that i read the most uh, when i'm reading news mm -hmm. on a road mainstream media uh, U.S. European mainstream media, yeah. In connection with what we are talking about, is uh, is how they present that um, Venezuelan authorities are reaching the the Barbados agreement. Mm, yeah, it's so easy for them to say that. Yeah. They say they don't. What, what, how about they do and go and check? Uh, and, you know, they, and they twist reality and, and, and they say that we are reaching the, the Barbados Agreement because we are best some people. But they don't talk about the plots. Yeah. I mean, and what we are supposed to do if, if any country, any government uncover a, a, a terrorist or, you know, whatever. The sure, and, and how about something else? I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that part of the anxiety that highlights now was your San Miguel, which is soon going to be forgotten just like everybody else for them because it's not a matter of solidarity. Mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure that one thing that I has a lot of people quite anxious and quite uncomfortable is what she might be saying willfully about all of this. How so much do you know that the people? opposition people here in Venezuela are afraid of what she can say? Too much. Some people, yes, yeah, some higher ups there. I'm sure that's part of it. I'm sure it's a lot. Of, I mean, I think he has been in the business for years. Well connected. Well connected in your business. Yeah, well connected, well -connected and yeah, well funded also, very well funded and continuously for a very, for a very long time. So yes, I mean, think that if she naming some names is going to be one of the main reasons why some people can be quite anxious and even forgetting about my Corina Machado in this case. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and so, but you know, what about checking out what she said, used to say, probably, and I'm thinking about now both ladies, I'm thinking about Rocio San Miguel, I'm thinking also thinking about my Corina Machado, but they, their public statements historically has been about any kind of appeasement with the Venezuelan government, because they call it appeasement curtailing to, uh, cur to surrendering, uh, what not, I mean, she, they did. We had fair elections in the ISIS. Yes, it's close to the day, I mean, the, 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 yes, exactly, but I mean, just think about how aggressive, especially when Corina has been about not negotiating anything with the government, not getting into any sort of dialogue. Yes. The only way out is fixed by pressure, international pressure, by strength. Military invasions. Yeah, everything. Yeah. And, and now she's saying that Venezuela is like the fourth. Is that one of the most recent statements? She was saying that Venezuela is the fourth producer to get into that. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're not. Yes, exactly. I mean, like. Which no one believes in Venezuela. I mean, that not even the yeah. right wingers that support her. I mean, they, the small number of five fingers that support her, support her precisely because she's a radical. And because she's a fundamentalist. Mm -hmm. And also because she's well connected and also she has a, like a very good, yeah, very professional, in her own view, entourage. Mm -hmm. Very well advised. She has, I mean, she has, this also kind of explains a lot of things. I mean, she has a reach that I haven't seen. I think not even the Roberto Lopez had it. Well, I mean, there's also reasons for that. but. Uh, the 
you have that, that huge reach he has. In terms of U.S. stuff? U.S., yeah, I'm talking about stores like, you know, the Atlantic Council, the Economist, mm. uh, the, the Spiegel, what not? I mean, it's like she was like front cover of a lot of media outlets that usually forget about like, the absolute systems of Venezuela. Oh, there's yeah, something like this is going on. I mean, she was so well placed that it's even fishy. It was clear. I mean, she has always been, by the way, in NASA. Yeah, they say that Maduro is afraid of her. Yeah, which is kind of a big line because she, I mean, if you ask me, I believe that she doesn't have any chance of winning a presidential election here in Venezuela. Yes, I'll be frank about something. Okay. Her numbers probably increase because she's the one. In contrast to the others, including Enrique Gabriel Barroski, mm -hmm. which has the most radical speech, and um, that appeals to certain people, and that could also appeal to some uh, disgruntled new people that are actually happy to listen to someone say something aggressive and forget about what, the last one who said this kind of things in 2019. Mm -hmm. The same set of stupid promises, the same posting, the same. Uh, a uh, standing, I mean all of that, and it's like the groundhog day, it's a groundhog day situation, you know, we're just replacing one video with another one, uh, but it also showed how much she was actually part of the U.S. instead of Venezuela. I mean, do you remember the, her debut, her public debut, right, the, the, the most uh, visible one? Of, of course she has a previous one, she was at the she was at the Miraflora de Coup, uh -huh. but with Summa in 2005, you know, that famous photo of Bush. Mm -hmm. yeah. 2005, with the Summa de things. That's another thing. Mind you, that she's always into some sort of parallel institution that challenges the legitimacy of any government institution, regardless. Especially on the electoral side. Mm -hmm. Think about all these parallel elections that we had in 2017. I think the primaries, the, the 40 primaries, right, recently, I mean, you have all these performances going on, and that kind of, kind of tells you what kind of build-up she's after, how, how the non-recognition of the government is going to be, how just taking over the primary process, which is what well, it was a bit shameful, a bit sad, a bit dysfunctional, was a was just another uh, area she needed to control in order to have like, full control in a despotic way, in a tyrannical way, of the opposition. I mean, the only authorized voice. Mean, she still struggles to have. And she has, you know, mind you, I think she has uh, succeeded, in, at least at some, at, at at some to, level. Yeah, to some extent she has. But then you have, like, why is she uh, inhabited? Why is she banned from participating of the electoral process? And you have to think about just one of the two examples, because there are some administrative issues regarding corruption, which are not uh, scandalous, because you can find worse of them, mm -hmm. but you have one that's actually quite severe, which was in 2014. Remember that she was a, a deputy, yeah, a member of parliament that year. During 2014, during, uh, 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 precisely the moment that the things were at uh, the highest level of tension. We're talking about February, March 2014. They were trying to ask Maduro this a few months after he won the elections, after Chavez died. So, so that's yes, so it, was a year, it was after the municipal. They were thinking that they were going to be able to, to do it. I mean, I mean, I have like a different take about that part because, yes, of course, during 2013, it was all about not, the non recognition of the new government mm -hmm. and based on some phony four accusations that actually were yeah. uh, proven to be wrong, to be fake, by international standards. For instance, they weren't there as well. It's even Jenny Carter, I mean, was at that moment. I mean, a lot of people did. Uh, but if you remember, in December 2013, there was these municipality elections, which was like a, a 
radio radio opportunity to like show some force, mm -hmm. especially not only to show some force on uh, you know street force, but also uh, as to deliver what they were already saying about how weak, how rejected was the Chavista yeah. order back then. Mm -hmm. And it was a goal Chavista victory. Yes, yes with a very with also significant victories for the opposition because we, we have to say everything we really want yes. honest about it. But the general envi ambience, environment, the spirit of that moment was actually not confrontation. Actually, I, I think it could be not all of you already here. You know, or were you I here? was in the US, but I followed close of course. Of course, because of the, the work. Of course, but I mean, I remember one thing that was quite important was a lot of bridges were really established, and a lot of people that were probably divided something to some level. Uh, during the previous cycle, between the opposition and, and yeah, I mean, people had, I mean, they were sent to the ground in, in a very organic way, even to reconciliation, in a way, in a natural mm -hmm. Venezuelan kind of way, I mean, mm -hmm. a very relaxed kind of approach. Even myself, I remember, like, really, you know, revisiting people that was open the opposition that were just talking. And that suddenly stopped when La Salida came. With the exit, it was a major operation when she was leaving with Leopoldo Lopez and Antonio Ledesma. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a major disruption, and I think that was actually conceived, of course, by the US intelligence that were also aware of this kind of movement. Mind you, that over, but I had an was still here, which was, was like the number two of the US Embassy. The guy who actually Brian knows, Adams, yes. knows who knows Brian Arango. Uh -huh. The guy who knows who knew most about Venezuela. He was a very dangerous, I mean, I was not what I was expecting. Ambassadors came and went, attaches came and went, by and by remained there like 20 years. And that was the actual guy, probably the chief of station. You know, he was the guy who knew the most about Venezuela and understood dangerously enough Venezuela. And he was also he's also, he's also out. And he was but he was out somewhere like somewhere like I think 2018. He stayed there for a very long time. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is that people knew about the spirit of the moment was and what, need to, what needed to be done, and actually it was almost irreversible what they did. And Margarita was part of that, but she was also a, a member of parliament. So, during those days, there was this uh, important meeting at the OAS, oh, yes, yes. right? And at that moment, we had a very fundamentalist right-wing government in Panama. Actually, you have this extremely destructive guy who was actually the OAS ambassador back then, who never became the, the foreign affairs minister of Panama, Guillermo Coches. Okay. Which is, I mean, just, look, just look for the name, he's one of the most powerful people in, in the whole of America. They actually were they given their seat in the OAS assembly to uh, as a representative of Panama. Yes. And they were trying to actually do it. Also, it was, uh, the, it were, as they were responding to a live broadcast of this event, yes. which actually most of the countries asked for them to be closed. And she wasn't able to. But, I mean, this is a major breach on your own oath as a member of parliament. You can't go and represent country. another country that's for other political so you were almost immediately. Exactly. And that's actually the reason why she's, because she has been banned ever since. Mm -hmm. People forget about this. Yes. So anyway, you, you have, so after that she became like a rogue actor, not a rogue actor, uh, a non-systemic mm -hmm. opposition radical, yeah. right, with, yeah, with a, with a strong appeal. She has always been extremely close to Michael Rubio. She's an asset of Michael Rubio. So uh, also. And Chris Javier, as a from the South Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. because, so, and she was always against any kind of, a peaceful resolution, peaceful process regarding U.S. and Venezuelan relations. Yes. Suddenly, and also not, not recognizing any of the Venezuelan institutions, yes. any of them. Yes. And so, as a last resort, I mean, around the days that she's been quote unquote elected as within the primaries. She kind of like winked in that direction a bit. Like, yes, we are not going to go against the Barbados process and whatnot. Sure. And that was it. 
She was never part of any agreement whatsoever regarding any kind of peaceful resolution or dialogue or this or starting any kind of process or even saying well, a phrase. That's what the right wing media talk right about. Yes, she lied to so They say that we breach also the Rwanda agreement because, because uh, we, we, we uh, disqualified myself, which was never part of the Rwanda agreement. Never was, and, never, and, and she never, I mean, she and was, I, I tried to, she had a way of, of, of addressing the other part of the opposition, not not anything against that, which is, she had another name, it was like, I mean, it, it was kind of like reaching the opposition, you know, I mean, the, like the regime. Like whatever. Yeah, I mean, uh, some, some of those adjectives, uh -huh. and she, uh, that's the way she, she, she addressed. She address those guys that are negotiating with the Venezuelan government. If a piece that from us. Traders, as a piece of sellers. There's a tension, you know, inside there. Oh, huge, I mean, she's, I mean, it, 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 maybe she has increased some numbers of approval, but no one has shown, and I'm and I, and I challenging able to show the rejection numbers, which are always high. Yes, it's always is that what I told you that I don't see her winning. I, 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 maybe, maybe that effect that you talk about, you know, she, you know, winning and being the new figure or whatever, but do you remember what happened? Yes, hours after the... Supreme Court disqualification announcement was made. I mean that she called for a demonstration in Altamira Square. Yes. And no right. one shows up. Yes, she did. And also in Chacarito. Yeah, and I was like, wow. Yeah, she's not moving people because it doesn't work for anyone. That's that's another major issue here. It doesn't work for the business people. I mean, it doesn't work for the private sector in general. Yes, it doesn't work for the actual the environment. Yeah, I mean, Again. everybody seems, except her, suffered the yes. sanctions, suffered the blockade, suffered the whole I'm talking about that, man. I'm completely out of time. We're sick of this crap. You were not. Of course, I mean, I mean, I, 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 full, I fully support any sort of yes. peaceful resolution of this, because we all have been. I mean, I've never been interested in a, in a major confrontation because you know how that goes. I mean, who's the one that's going to win? Mm -hmm. But I mean, in this case, it was uh, she. I mean, she didn't suffer the same as everybody else. She made an advantage. She took advantage of that and she exploited that mm -hmm. in order to keep that narrative going on yeah. and to present and introduce herself as a radical and whatnot and a you know, you know, warrior. And, and she also tried, you know, to to adapt Camilleotti kind of there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, she, because when the lady office in Argentina, she started to dress herself as a liberal. Yeah. For example. Uh -huh. So I mean, anyway, it's complicated. So that, that's the main thing about her. I mean, you can't find. She's the candidate of disruption. She's the candidate of regime change. She's the candidate of a uh, of national suicide. Mm -hmm. She's not going to do. And now some and all the but the other thing is she's the candidate of the US. Like, that's the other. I'm sorry. Complete uh, evidence, uh, uh, proof that she is how the whole democratic process, the whole Barbados dialogue and whatnot, especially in the media, because politically it's more nuanced, mm -hmm. and it's re it reduced to her. Yeah. So whose candidate is she? Yes, it's complicated. Well, I think it's quite simple, actually. I mean, in this case, I mean, it's so simple because she was the candidate of the ring. Basically, it mm -hmm. and still, it, and the, she was supposed to be either the runner up or either the trigger of what's starting to happen right now. It was a sort of catch 22 situation yeah. in the sense that even the Democrats right now were cornered into making this to take a step, and even that is ruins. I mean, I'm not all towns of that are cut right now, I'm not severe. Yeah, so. But you can expect we're going to be pretty pessimistic about the next months. I mean, I, one more time, I hope I'm proven wrong, yes. but I think that's the case. Another one, very important one. There was a full national consensus about the Ezequiel referendum in Venezuela, except for one person that actually took the line from the Guyanese. Foreign Ministry, and that was Maria Corina Machado. 
So who she and played? And the company's party. And the company's party. <laughs> yes. We were not talking about that next. Yes. No, yes. But first, we, we we should jump right now to the second scene that I want yes. you to talk about, which is the um, Ezekiel. Ezekiel. The whole Ezekiel thing. Yes. But mostly, I mean, the parts that I believe is are important for our audience is that part that tried to explain what has been happening in recent months, like an imperialist, yes, a Venezuelan yes. Uh, yes, the tyranny that is trying to invade yeah, Guyana. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, I mean, and I'm, I'm sorry for, for what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to go full putting on, on Carson right now, but some historical elements, need, they need to, uh, know about. Yes. You have to think about Guyana, the Ezequiel, not Guyana. The Ezequiel territory, it's the same in a sense as Malvinas, and in the same sense is as Belize and Gran Britannica right there, mm -hmm. and it's the same as Gibraltar. In what, yes, exactly. And in, what, in, in what sense? These are all British enclaves or intake attempts in very important uh, critical areas of Marinas, yes, in the southern Atlantic protection, yes, and also, there's also oil there. In the same, I mean, where there are resources or very well, or very important water right, that they can control, and um, that's the origin of it all. I mean, we, we can start, we know to the 16th century, Sir Walter Raleigh and the whole Manoa thing, you know. Which is pretty cool, I remember. The, the, the Carson would be Yeah, that was a joke because, I mean, this is... We'll talk a lot about history. Yes, but I mean, so we, we have to all talk about history because history is alive only for some people, some soulless people think that history is dead. Mm -hmm. But it's not. History is alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 Ye
which which make it more valid because some people try to to the yeah, to erase the value it. of the DNA yeah, saying it. that it was not signed by Guyana but Guyana authorities yeah, yeah, yeah. authorities were there yes. because you know the government was the, the the whole independence you know thing was happening already in Guyana. Exactly. Uh, so and then the government got really changed. Exactly. <laughs> but, but, but a few months later, uh, the, the thing was ratified uh, in Portuguese. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, those yeah. ones saying that the Geneva Agreement is there, and it doesn't matter. I believe that those guys need to read the Geneva Agreement, read the the Protocol of Port Spain, mm -hmm. and, and and realize that that is. That that agreement set the route or the path for exactly. the solution of the problem. And also, it's a main Venezuela claim mm -hmm. in international public law. That's a main claim. It's not giving back forcefully that we consider ours, which it is. It's this is the way. And it did, this is the frame. And it clearly specify that, that 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 we should. I mean, the parts should. Uh, Follow the peaceful resolution processes defined by the UN Charter, exactly. exactly. and those steps were not followed. I mean, I, I mean, when uh, the Guyanese people with the help of the uh, Exxon Mobil uh, sent the case to the, to the okay. International uh, Court of Justice. Justice. Yes, that's the case. I mean, without the knowledge of this. We also have to mind something else, which it's not a state, it's a thing of context, because a lot of people also, there's a spin going on, and the commandant the child just gave away in his again. No, that's not true. I mean, I think it, maybe his first visit, international visit, one thing he assumed, was actually to Georgetown. Basically to say, we are going to deal with this in the most friendly terms possible, and for the benefit of both. And it's absurd to think right? that those are the right wingers in Venezuela that have been launched in that idea. Yeah, of course, it's the same but It's absurd that someone that, I mean, among Venezuelans, the, 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 the group of Venezuelans that are most in favor of regaining uh, the Seguimo the, territory the, the are the military people. Yes. Uh, at least that's how I see it. It's a military reunification. It has to be with it. All the military people that you talk right. with, uh, they, I mean, you, they might be right wingers, they might be left wingers, they might be chavistas, or uh, right. whatever. Uh, but it's a keyword, it's something that is right. on the yeah. And yeah. well, it might be something about it. Of course, that's one of the one of the, the models of the military. And so there is one of the yes, right. some of the most sort of guys from this key. Yes. yes. Uh, but you remember who had like the most aggressive stands? All the executive relations during all these years, the most aggressive one, as in no negotiation, no most bar about it, it was my you know, child. Exactly. Until the referendum, which he actually <laughs> turned about face and said something different. So that's how opportunistic yeah, the day is. He basically tried in this recent change of mood of saying that we uh, should. Uh, Recognize the jurisdiction of the International Court of Justice, exactly. which is an illegality because it's against the Geneva Agreement. And it's funny because she didn't so, say that. You can, you can check out what she was saying about this in 2020. For example, this is mm -hmm. throwing in the random here. I mean, this, another, this one other thing you have to take into account here. When does this conference start? When is the exact moment that this started? I mean, it is just when, when, when the Guyanese government began to give the uh, oil concession, right? Or not? To the U.S., of course. What year was that? Last year? No, man. 2015. I mean, in 2015, they began there. We didn't recognize the situation as part of the pincer approach to Venezuela with all the issues that we were dealing with economically, yes. uh, about the uh, storage, about uh, uh, the access to goods. Uh, everything, the social unrest and whatnot, you know, the, 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 the crisis, I mean, everything was going on, and also we had this on top of it, which is with uh, every grand, big grandeur was the, the, president. the president of the Guyanese president, actually almost 
You don't like even recognize if fire range. Those are crooks. Mm. Proven crooks. Corrupt. Yes. In, in the case of a lady, the current person, it's even worse. It's even worse. The, the thing about it, the other side is quite ideological. The thing is that it's not actually between Guyana and Venezuela. That's the first thing. Yes. It's about Venezuela against Exxon Mobil. And of course, the why? Okay, well, of course, the U.S. corporate America in this case, corporate U.S. Because they were already de facto acknowledging a lot of oil reserves, oil fields, all offshore in what's called the the Atlantic, the Atlantic front of the, which has never been because of, of the unresolved legal situation of in the Secretary in general. If the, it has been limited. completely delimited, so it's not clear where officially it's Venezuelan, yeah. the, the Venezuelan territory actually ends and where the UN starts for the international people. We do know, we, we understand where it starts when it ends. And the thing is that what happened uh, after the referendum, after the world of vote mm -hmm. to support the referendum, to support key questions about it. I'm not going to go through all of them, yes. but um, basically it's the Atlantic Geneva Agreement, the Atlantic Territory, it's the Venezuela, the Atlantic Territory, the Common Ground, a, a, a consensus, a national consensus about it. We don't recognize international law. Not recognizing the, the ICJ, correct? And it's not something related to oil. Not only, really, really. of course, we're going to make a consensus or something like that. Yeah, and also to address the, the actual territory, the, 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 the grounds, not only the the sea uh, borders, but also the borders, yes. yeah. But now we also we, the, the resource, the, the right to explore the resources on the dry main. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the approach, and that's what happens when our president meets with you finally. One of the most important things that that the referendum show was that the national consent. Exactly, the national consent. It was very well support. Around the yes. Atona was important. It was also, huge. And I believe that it's important to highlight that. Because each and every. Ah, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. But, but, but uh, a lot of people, especially in, in the north, they say that the referendum basically was uh, asking Venezuela if we want to invade. invade. Yes. And they mix. In May, we incorporated, which is something that came up just a few days after the referendum, that the Venezuelan government said we want to incorporate the Guyana and Sequiba state into Venezuela's, you know, territory. So, in my opinion, that's a symbolic uh, 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 gesture, the minimal thing that the Venezuelan government could do in order to peacefully try to exercise sovereignty yes. over the territory. Exactly. Right. Which is yeah, which was the, like the starting point for this new stage. At least as, as far as we exactly know. that lead us to that meeting that we were about. Yeah, which was in Saint Louis in the Grenadines mm -hmm. by the well, the uh, uh, goodwill of Juan Gonzalez, in the secretary of, of the community and also. also. Yeah, exactly, and Brazil of course. Yes. Which they also had a, a stake here. Of Part of the SAP was actually. Because of, you know, it's part of Brazil, a small uh, a, a stretch of, of territory is part of Brazil. Mm -hmm. If you can solve part of this, if you as a little part, you can see the whole paper that I was uh, conference about it. It's actually part of Brazil society. It was also taken from them. And also you have, who are the people that actually populate the north of all those areas? That's another discussion. That's Brazil. People in the north also say that we didn't consult in the referendum that we are these people and, 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 and we cannot do that. I mean that's not possibly I mean that's not possibly to legally to do something like that because we are not we are not going to have control over that territory. Are they facto control by they are the ones that control that territory. So yes, a lot of people criticize us in the north because they say why are you not consulting the people we are we cannot do why that. should we anyway? I mean what are they doing about it? And you know, what kind of Peaceful approach of that. I mean, but that was part of the arguments that I read somewhere. It was pretty, yeah, it's, it's pretty dumb. It's, it's pretty, you know, it's, it's I, new rock. I'm right? asking you about that because even people that you are supposed to, we are, as Venezuelan, are 
believe that our partners or you know Ch Chavista Venezuelan supporters began to spread information that well, that's, that's not right. No, that's part of it. That's basically part of it. That's also and a that's that also a clue, what I told you before, of cameras that, 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 that automatic solidarity, you know? Yes, of course, yeah, let's take it the Afro people uh, that seem like yeah, but, that but, 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 say, but, against the Afro. Can you find any declaration, statement, or whatever of any Venezuelan leader of the government, I mean, Presidente Maduro, Minister of Defense, Paradino, Vice President, Vice anyone mm. saying something against the Indianese population, saying something about invading, saying, saying something about stopping any kind of military confrontation. Not at all. You can see the, the framework actually only. Transcripts of the. Well, I'll get the cover of the. I forgot, the I mean, I forgot the city in. in St. Vincent, what they meant. Argyle. Argyle, thank you. Argyle, yeah. yes, exactly. Argyle. thank you. Yeah, the Argyle agreement, what do you see? I mean, basically, there was this reunion. I mean, you would have to show some strength, of course, but not in, in order to abuse of a smaller, less populated country. Yes. Neighbor, actually, a neighboring country, after all. But just to show that there's a one consensus, consensualized come, uh, yes. common approach and will about what to do with the situation. Mm -hmm. Because this goes back in, to our independence years. I mean, this is actually the what they call it, yes, from the, the start. Legal. Yeah, the, the, the little base of all this, the little basis. Anyway, the thing is yeah, that right. this is follow the duties. Exactly. Uh, the opposite. There is another legal term for that, but I forget. Yeah, yeah we're not lawyers. We're not yeah, we're not, we're not, none of us. But anyway, the thing is that this this first Argyle uh, conference was basically just to set up a framework. I mean, try to reduce tensions. reduce tensions, to set up channels, to set up to set up working groups, to meet on a three month basis on a high level. Uh, uh, I mean, it's something that Guyana have not respected, especially the, 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 the yeah. numeral in which uh, they call the parts to avoid escalations. And exactly. that's the part of and the that 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 declaration yeah. that the Guyanese government. I mean, of course, they won't. Yeah. Because, yeah. because, yeah. because, yeah. 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 because we're not talking about the Guyanese government, we're talking about US proxies here. We're not talking about the government. Yeah. Yeah. Have they own the payroll, the laws. On, on, mm -hmm. uh, uh, with the ICGA, ICJR payroll, the judges from the ICJR also the Exxon payroll. I mean, we have a lot of things, all of the species, specifically on the Venezuelan case, because this is also controversial because they're doing this shit, this shit work here, but on the other side, at least they admitted what's going on in Palestine. I mean, but it was like the minimum you can expect of any multinational institution. I'm just saying this, stating this and leave it behind. Uh, but, the thing is that yes, what, what happened after the Argyle uh, agreements? The British uh, the British uh, sent uh, maybe uh, a uh, worship uh, there. Yes. Exactly. And so that actually increased the tension one more time. Now there's like this energy and innovation and what that for going on so right now in Iran. This is from South Count people. Yeah, the, the Southern Command, yes, and all that researchers. And it's too obvious. It's too obvious what's actually going on. And how I think that proxy of the U.S. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, 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 and money. You know, there are there are figures around of how many of that wealth is already yes, yes. driven into the common population, which is almost nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. nothing. I mean, you have people saying this. Of course, there is a bit of conundrum because you have to acknowledge this, but at the same time, you know. Well, you have to, you're not going to agree with the Venezuelan side, at least overly. So it's very important to find very different ways to, different angles, not only on the political, on the formal side, you have to see how, because it's not impossible to find what's called a social off ramp between Venezuelan and Vietnamese people, at some way, at some level. It has to also happen in order to also to put some pressure, especially on the Guyanese government in this case. That's the best way we have right now. I believe that that's what we have. And you also have another positive experience that could be 
beneficial for both sides. Well, just look at the uh, gas agreement between Trinidad and Venezuela. Right? We're talking about shared fields. Mm. How is that not? A, how is, that, is that impossible in the, mm. the Venezuelan yeah. yeah. context, for example? I think not. Yes. I mean, you have to be creative about the formulas in order to set up a win-win situation, which is something, of course, it's not going to happen ever with Exxon in the middle of this one. I, I just, just to finish this part, I, I just remember something that I read about those people claiming that we are anti black people or something. I mean, that's just childish. Uh, yes, that's, yes. That's, that's just, but, that's just but, stupid. But some people, some friends of us in the North wrote something about, listen, Venezuela has more Afro population than Guyana itself. Yes, but what are you talking about? Well, anyway, I mean, I, I it's childish. It's, it's stupid, but a lot of people use it. Yeah, okay. Like, as a yeah, okay. just like, no, no, the minor, or, no. I mean, it's, yeah, that's pretty stupid because, I mean, well, that actually talks more, more about the state of affairs with those progressive uh, organizations that it talks about us, that we actually have to defend our sovereignty, that we do have a different and very more uh, deep really interpretation of what nationalism means and that is against our principles as a, a nation to invade countries and in Venezuela historically and also has opposed that of course and, and also exactly and one more thing remember the Chavismo is against that I mean the Padre Grande concept goes against the idea of suspending the reasons and choking. Yeah, no, the dark and identity anxiety. I mean, it has nothing to do with real stuff going on. I mean, it's just childish. And it's sad also in a way because maybe they could have, what about thinking about what Edson is doing, do something about that, it just involves them even more than us. I mean, this is also, I mean, okay, it's not, it's, it's a global corporation, but we're based. Who are the owners of this shit? I mean, please. Yes. It's, it's, it's pretty disappointing, but it's also, dis it also descriptive of something that's going on with a, with a lot of, not only the growth, I mean, the thing I think is even a bit more global with the left in general. Mm -hmm. I'm going to delve into that, but I know you're interested in one specific aspect of the law. Because I'm not going to talk about the whole thing, because I have a different take on and that's uh, a very. But it's okay to talk about It's controversial. Some people don't like it because, I mean, these. I know. The things that we've gone, gone through, I mean, make all this concern so petty when you're actually concerned about national survival on such a level and facing an enemy so overwhelmingly huge and violent against you that some things you have, in the best case, you have to. If they're actually that important, you have to put it in the back burner mm -hmm. until something until you get into a moment you can discuss them again. Mm -hmm. And then I said, I'm, I'm not going to get into that, but I mean, this is going to hurt some people, I guess. But it even, it even changed the meaning of what to be conservative about things is. Yeah. Especially in a moment, I remember, for example, talking about my grandma child back in 2014. It was a moment, it was a very violent, very disruptive, and she was the one talking about national liberation. And we were the ones talking about preserving order and stability. Because all the ideological coordinates are fucked up, they're messed up. I mean, how can you just think anything else is a mess, especially after COVID, especially after Ukraine, especially after Palestine? It's all messed up, it's all. Uh, destabilized in, in, I mean, in a cognitive way. Yeah. It's all part of a huge cognitive I mean, How about the actual colonialists of the left right thing? And now I'm not getting it. This is, this is what people think about red brown bullshit and that kind of thing. No, I'm a, South, I'm a global South American. I believe in a third world country. Yeah. I don't have time for that crap. I forgot all that, that aesthetic side of politics. I don't. Especially if you have to engage in order to make to preserve and defend the allowal of our country to basically exist. Mm -hmm. So those concerns actually make some of those pretty petty, like for example saying that, uh, I mean, the, the racial issue here, yes. it doesn't make sense at all. And that, that takes us to a, a specific 
and you want to talk about which is the Communist Party of Venezuela. Yes, as I said, but the next part is... Yes, which is also insanely disappointing. I moved to, I voted several times, basically. Yeah, too, too I mean, but it was more, it was more sentimental vote than something else. Mm -hmm. You knew it, it, was, it wasn't a power, actually. It was yeah. just a, a way to... Express solidarity. Express, yeah, exactly. It was a historical party, uh -huh. whatnot. But once you actually check the actual history, especially Let's call it this way, the like Fourth Republic, okay. well, I mean, from the 60s to now, history of the Communist Party, what do you actually have? That's the first thing. I mean, it's very painful, I mean, because yes, of course... But they have achieved, is what you're talking about. Not only that, I mean, what's, 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 what's also involved there, what's the spirit, the culture, the, the historical experience of it all, and the bitterness also inside the ranks, and the also the meaninglessness, the meaninglessness mm -hmm. they turn into, not during the Chavismo, by the way. Actually, Chavismo gave a, a, like a, a, job, uh, a boost, a boost. <laughs> because of people like, the people like us, exactly, yes. not because of something else. Mm -hmm. But think about, I mean, it's easy, of course, and it's unfair to, like, you know, uh, Maybe. No, show some of the major mistakes they did in the past. As in, how? Before that, oh, 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 the military struggle, the oh, struggle, which was vile, which was awful, which was extremely violent, extremely unfair, but also had like a huge chapter of vanity, of betrayals, of very bad decisions, very overconfident and proud decisions that weren't necessarily needed to be taken. Like for example, how come you're gonna have, you have like this wonderful military people involved in the armed struggle, and you get the military leadership for that and was had no military knowledge whatsoever. I'm talking about the Hermo Garcia Pons. When you had Juan de Dios Monca Vidal, este, ¿cómo se llama? Pedro Medina Silva, Nicolás Gustavo. I mean, people actually knew of them and had what to do. And they had very smart decisions. Este, este, coño, se ve el ponteñazo. Manuel Ponte Rodrigo. For example, that's also petty just to do this kind of thing. But the thing is, that, uh, also, if you find out how actually it was the demise, where, to, where did the demise, the, the murder of Fabrizio Vela started? And you have like a very actually checkered history, nasty, pretty nasty in a lot of aspects. Uh, regardless of the, a lot of the brightest minds of that moment in Venezuela. And think about it, I mean, for example, Argelia Lara, Alfredo Manet, uh, you have the Hurels, which are the name of the I mean, you have like huge patriotic names and bright people who afterwards, after the, the defragmentation of the body, moved on and tried to set up a new, very interesting approach to the party, but Fabrizio Hela himself, I mean, and you have like a very bitter history with all this. I mean, which is a common feat to a lot of communist parties in the world. You can think of, it also has to do with being defeated. Yeah, think about the Spanish Communist Party. Man, that's also a very sad history. Mm -hmm. And um, and you have like this, they have, they have, not us. I mean, also think about what they did with people like Ibrahim Lopez Garcia. Like they did, I mean, with this black minds, I mean, Ibrahim Lopez Garcia was a man, was a, I mean, it was a brilliant chemist. Uh, Physician and physic. It's not physician as a doctor, but physic. Mm -hmm. And also a chemistry guy. He also had someone very good in setting up bombs, for example, and just put him to like do, you know, graffitis and exposing him to dangers that were not necessary. You know what I mean? It's a very checkered and complicated history. The thing is, and it's also a dishonest history. In what sense? In the sense that each and every revision attempt has been like faced with like this dogmatic 
don't do the approach. Barrier. Yes, that barrier, and also like, un and being like uncriticizable, right? And um, yeah, we have the TV band, we have all that, sure. I mean, but it wasn't, it was already a powerless minority party back then. Yeah, yeah they supported by Fel Candela. Mm -hmm. Of course, it was part of this historical battle. But also, Many people in the left support it anyway, but... but no, no, I mean, that, I mean, if, if you can think about other examples, think about the detail of right to support a right wing government in Greece in order to keep stability going mm -hmm. instead of, you know, going to another civil war that we have in Greece. Yeah. It's not that easy. I mean, you think about, I don't know, Goliath in Italy. You think about a lot of people that actually tried to vote, they were facing very complex crossroads and they just decided they chose one path over another. That's it. I mean, it's nothing to be judged about. And, I, and if I was me at that start when I started talking about this, because it really, it's close to my heart in, in, in several ways, because I actually, a pretty good start. And you can go, if you go deep, you know, that rather you're going to find so many things. So many valuable things also, of course. I mean, you do have, you can also find like the poetic, uh, virtuous, Side of, side of the Communist Party all, the, all along. Mm -hmm. Before that, even more, you have like epic figures like uh, uh, Machado Brothers, you have, uh, was it uh, Tony Guiteras, uh, not even Tony Guiteras, Aponte, who was in, in Cuba back then, who died with Tony Guiteras, was murdered by Batista. You have people like, I mean, think about the, think about Gustavo Machado fighting with Sandino in Nicaragua. I mean, you have that also there. It's part of also of the the epic, of the epic and the tradition of the communist party. Mm -hmm. But then, what do you have? You have like a gray, uh, motionless, rigid party that got very much involved by the way with Rafael Ramirez, among others, mm -hmm. the Fundación Ormeño, and that they used to have some money, which is also good. And um, yeah, there's no uh, big problem with that. So Rafael Ramirez is the old PDVSA Tsar of that. Now. Yeah, that actually is, was very interested in him becoming the president and also mm -hmm. him being the, the actual uh, successor. successor of the Comandante Chavez and whatnot. It was a very good and sad figure also. And the economies were actually pretty close to him. And um, the thing is that they, they were split into irrelevance was proportional to the way that they started to set apart from Chavismo in mm -hmm. general. So think about 2013 when Nicolás was elected. I mean, they just start to set up a very big distance with the Gobierno, with, yeah, with the PSOE, with Nicolás Maduro, with leadership in particular, mm -hmm. they were quite uh, against, it. against it in a very demeaning way. I mean, they say, they used to say that he wasn't qualified to be, to be because he was a bus driver because he didn't have like, the old tradition of the Marxist Leninist whatnot uh -huh. uh, okay. formation and the truth what, and everything of that. But because also, mind you, that the Communist Party has always been a bourgeois party here. Like in most of Latin America, of course. And it's coherent that the main core of this party is going to be a professional class. Mm -hmm. Because those are the ones that are able to actually start to build a book. Of and of course, you do have of course, some, some grassroots leaders. And I mean, think about Maguire, for example, no? the, the campesino from the Obreros, the case of uh, Faria, mm -hmm. Faria Padre, Jesus Faria, the union from the city of the people, he was like all Sovieticus, yes. all, all the way. But anyway, I mean, it's not that, it's also it's, it's not a homogeneous thing. But the thing is that they, their irrelevancy is also proportional to how many votes they were getting, how much recognition they had, and how many, how much engagement they actually have, besides of some very small pockets at some, some points. And how, first gradually, and then suddenly, they, they echo, they just repeat the same lines, the same stance, the same opinions that the right, that the, the pro-intervention people have. 
Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Yes, in that line. I, a few days ago, I had this meeting with some people in the US. Mm -hmm. Really, actually. Uh, uh, and they asked me, well, what's the position of the Communist Party uh, on the Ezequiel issue? Mm -hmm. And I told them, I don't remember. Let me, let, let me look around. They, they, they make a statement. Mm -hmm. um, like the first two points of that statement were like general points of not ordinary Venezuelan, you know, uh, defense of, you know, sovereignty or something like that. But the rest, there were like seven or eight points in that declaration where talking points, I mean, many three talking points completely. All of them uh, replicated the same, uh, you know, mainstream narrative, gringo narrative uh, so, about this. So they became basically enforcers of those narratives. And then I look around and a lot of media use the PCB party statement declaration. Of course, to get the to the other yeah, exactly. Exactly. But that has happened before several times. Several times, yes. I mean, the and different it's trend. Trend. And it's a trend. It's a trend. It's a trend. It's just a really part of it. It's an integral part of the opposition. Mm -hmm. And also in, a, in very powerful situations. I mean, they are very dangerous to the to national sovereignty, which is the most important thing for us right now. Yes. Still is. And, um, and you also have another thing. Talk about democracy. Talk about in, internal democracy. I mean, when was the last time you heard a Congress where the, the Central Committee renew itself and renew its leadership? Yes, they are all the, the same all people all the time, at least for the last I don't 20 know, years at least. 10, 20 years. All, you think, no, more than 10. Yes. 20 years. And it just I, I, what, I, I mean, sorry that I interrupted you. But in that part, I I just want to raise something that I told you before uh, off camera, which was that I believe that the, what is happening in the Communist Party is the result of Trotsky's current tendency, you know, uh, 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 yeah. picking up in the party. But we told you don't you see, you see, I don't and see that. We, it, yeah. Uh, and I thought I told you what we already have said, right? Exactly, it's already fossilized. And also, not only that, I mean, there are, I haven't seen the evidence, but I know Charles, also Fidel, and then part of the issue, you know, getting money from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Part of this accompanying the enemy, the historical enemy, the, the identified oppressive the narrative. Mm -hmm. What happened? Now, the Communist Party right now is another thing. The other thing is that talking right now about uh, the PCB losing his seat in the parliament. But that's they are still making a lot of money. They, they, they do it all each and every year. I mean, that's the other thing. <laughs> just think of just go do it to Google search. And ever since, I don't know, 2009, I think, 2008, they each and every year they do the same drama queen stunt about being eliminated because of course they don't qualify according to the party's law. They don't. I mean they don't have the numbers. But that has never been a natural concern to the government or anyone. Only for them is at that time of the year that they call for attention and they victimize themselves in a huge nothing burger that has been the same each and every year. And that's quite stupid because it's not necessary, man. And people kind of lost respect um, for them, I mean. Yes. When they do that kind of stuff. The same thing with the with the people somehow connected to the Communist Party that got arrested. Mm -hmm. And they make this big noise about screaming and repression and uh, look at Maduro. Dictatorship and whatever, and and I believe that they made a big melodrama. I'm not saying that in all cases that's the case, yeah. but I believe that that's a tendency that they use that make people feel like there's something fishy happening here. Yeah, of course. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, but uh, that at least in my case affects the way I. Uh, began to see the Communist Party since, I don't know, maybe 2000, 
2020 or 2020. Yeah, I mean, because you have like a generational struggle within the party. You have people that are actually disgruntled and are against Fidel, against the OC, against the old people, because they are, except for Aquino, I mean, they don't, they're like, Dinosaur. Yeah, untouchable. they do. Untouchable, unmovable, unquestionable. I mean, it's a very small dictatorship. It kind of reminds me of, there's like this funny tale about the, uh, Jose Su Martin, and Chuchu Martin, it was a poet writer, and philosopher, and math, math, mathematician, but also he became partner of uh, General Torres in Panama. Okay. And he had, they had comes with a lot of political parties and central writers, but they, but he was like quite formal to the Honduras Communist Party party back right there. And they said this in Spanish, who said, somos un grupo pequeño pero bien sectario. We're a small group, but quite sectarian. Yeah, that's pretty much Australian. I mean, it's a bit of Honduras, I mean, that's heroic. And regardless of, of how how funny it, 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 it seems to us, I mean, to be a communist in Honduras during the 70s, I mean, it's, it's hardcore stuff. And um, that's the thing, I mean, it's a bigger party. And um, you have also, you know, there's the, a split right now. I think it's a legal split. I think it was part of the party actually has the, the Supreme Court to actually yes, to yes. the Asada yes. yes. Politica Administrativa. Yes, it is in the North began killing us because of that. I mean. Yeah, of course, but I mean, what about asking the other people and not thinking about what Figueres is saying? Mm -hmm. What about to have the Johnson there? Yes. And there are not all saints, because I know some of them because of my, my work on the rural area, and I know they're not also like too much concerned about the campesino justice. But anyway, I mean, I'm not going to go into that at all. But I mean, that's, that's just a way to say that it, um, it's, a, it's an informed opinion, but I also try to be, I know I've been disrespectful, but it could be even more disrespectful if I want to. I try, so I try to contain us and be respectful about it. But it's actually, at the end, it's a very sad history because it did, it, I mean, it was What would you say to the people in the US or Europe that do a better research. research. Struggle. I mean, first of all, don't be uh, apiaristic about it. Don't, don't, don't throw yourself away the first spin, the first version, the first Navigate Finder. Go a bit further. Also, think about two things. The Venezuelan complex context we've been for the last 15 years at least. And also, check out what the Congress party history is, especially the recent history. I'm talking about the last 30, 40 years, not the last 60, 80 years. Mm. I mean, there are many nuances, and it's a complex history like most of the Congress party histories around the world. And it's not fair, for example, to say that we, we all share the same common epic because it's, it's, it's pretty nasty to compare yourself to the Indonesian or the Chilean Congress party. Yes. It doesn't mean, of course, that you don't have your own uh, marches, your own history, your own persecuted memory. You do have that, but that's not the present. And you, and also, I mean, what a humorous party now. I'm thinking about if you know that Aquiles and Anima Masol are part of the Communist Party, and Anima Masol is one of the most, one of the brightest yeah. in both of the Aquiles, but the Masol was probably the one one of the most brightest persons ever walked in Venezuela, and, and no doubt about being in, in Caracas at least. Mm -hmm. And this is not actually memory of all the things they did on those uh, conferences and all those congresses and all the polemics they had on the culture field. This is what it is. It's just a dream. Within the Communist Party. Within the Communist Party. This, I mean, all those files probably are non existent. I mean, who are, who are we to blame about that? Whose patrimony was that? I really knew that we need to cut it out. No, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think it's wise. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, so, uh, it's a, uh, to, to conclude, I mean, for me it's a hard failed opinion. It's a mm -hmm. very disappointing one because I used to expect a lot more of the party, uh, at least as a symbol. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as a power option, maybe not as something that's going to, you know, impose a new drive on transformations within the Bolivarian project, but I do know for a fact that a lot of these young people with inside the party were interested in actually giving the fight, the ideological battle, the battle of ideas were not inside the Bolivarian, inside the whole uh, alliance of 